What's up, Cowboy? Do not hesitate. Commander. We are got no red race. What's the plan? Yes. GSL. Don't get in my way. Now. GSL Code S, Taste and Artos here, Tastosis. We have another sick match coming up here. This is the sickest possible group we've ever had uh, in the GSL. We got Lenock against Party. And uh, we just saw a Seed, uh, and I will say this barely beat Suotion. He yeah. barely eked out yeah. a win there. Yeah, Suotion uh, almost had it at times, yeah. man. He did he a really great did. job. I have to hand it to him. I uh, played really well. And in fact, he's a player that's. Uh, Pretty deadly, so you know, don't count him out. Maybe he can come back. All right. Meanwhile, Lenok and Parting, and of course, uh, you know, Lenok was one of these players that came in here uh, very, very young um, when he started out his uh, career. Yeah, he's know. been here since like season one or season two. He's yeah, been I think season out. two. Yeah, and uh, Lenok has been a badass ever since. Got a second in GSL. Has won two major offline MLG events. Yes. In fact, he just crushed I'm first in this last one. So that's really impressive because first is uh, one of the three Protoss badasses from I Am with Young Juan Seed. Yeah. So uh, I'm excited to see Lenok here against Parting, who's in great shape right now. And Parting is uh, one of the scariest Protosses in the world, basically. You know, Lenok is one of these guys. He actually is a little bit cheesier than a lot of the Zergs we have out there. Yeah, and yeah. it's very conventional cheese, but he knows when to pull it out. Yeah, he's... I'd say a good way. To, he's prone to aggression. Prone to aggression. Well said. There, there, there you go. Uh, Parting is cheesy. Lenok is prone to he's aggression. <laughs> Parting is uh, he's one of our brainier players here. Yeah, he's a. Uh, you know what I, I feel like he is. I feel like Squirtle's the real brain behind Parting. I think it's a good way to put it. I Maybe Parting has some better execution. Squirtle's even openly Squirtle said is that his crank is not that good. Squirtle is crank and Parting is Shredder. Okay, first of all, you're Krang and I'm Shredder, for the <laughs> record, Artosis. Well, if they were, if, those who, that's who they were. All right. <laughs> all right, guys, we're going to go into the game number one, another <laughs> GVP here. The here. Star Tail with Band Shredder, is the Krang, Artosis, or Lee Knock and Party, depending on you want to know, here in the GSL Code X. <laughs> GSL. Welcome to GSL Cloud Kingdom. As always, special thank you to our sponsors. In the bottom left, we have our very young Zerg. Quite a history behind this guy. His ideas, none other than. FXO, Lino. And in the upper right, we have our Protoss player, uh, champion, same as Lenok, very solid, I have no idea who the favorite is. Our Protoss player here is... Tati Tati. So she kind of filled up in here for uh, day number one. As it should be tasteless. Yep. GSL's the coolest place to be. It's where all the cool kids are at. There is one guy who I think has been coming down to our studio every day. Is that Korean yeah. guy? Oh, There's yeah. There's one Korean kid. He's like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I think he must live like down the street. you imagine how sick that youth is? It's like, well, I spent my, my formative years going down to the GSL studio every day and eating pizza and watching video games. That's pretty sick, That's actually. pretty sick, man. <laughs> Damn, making me jealous. I know, right? So a lot of people here rooting for party. Lenok not that far off. 
Uh, as you can see, he almost wants to deny the hatchery here. If you watch a lot of GSL, you know exactly what's going on. That's right. If you don't, it's okay. Tastosis is here with you. <laughs> we'll hold up your uh, nerd hand and yeah, walk you through it. All right, so, I mean, this is all the beginning of an actual normal PVZ. Notice no gas by Lenoch. He'll be going into a third hatch. The forge fast expansion for parting. Then that Nexus first into the forge. That's like almost completely standard at this point. Very few people actually go for uh, the forge before the Nexus anymore. Well, um, it's like parting's gonna hide that probe. Some Zergs are very good at finding every possible probe that can be hit on the map. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, It takes a lot of clicks, but with four lanes, you can absolutely do it. Yep. There's, you know, the map might look big and, you know, I don't want to say infinite, but just very spacious. But the truth is, there's actually only so many places you can hide a probe. That's right. So you can hypothetically check for it. There's actually a metagame to probe hiding. Uh, oh, yeah. We'll talk about that in a second, uh -oh. though, because... Nice! nice. Very that was close. And that was really close. Thing. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, there's a metagame to probe hiding, uh, where if there's like really good places to hide the probe, Zerg eventually figures those out and goes there, so then you hide it in like a stupid place yeah. that you should never hide something, and Zerg just won't go there, because why would you hide something there? So there's like yeah. a funny little metagame to that, and uh, I mean, we're not seeing it right this moment, but it happens from time to time. I'll point out next time it does, so you guys can think back, be like, oh yeah, you talked about this. We'll hold your hands and get you through it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm surprised Lenox leaving four lings outside there. You don't need to leave four there. Uh, leaving one can be great to watch for plus one, to watch what's coming out of the gateway. But the rest should be looking for that probe that just went back in by himself. So self-policing probe. <laughs> Good job, parting. <laughs> no probes out in the map at this point, so Lenox fine to leave those lings there. doesn't matter anymore. No gases yet. He's going to go heavy uh, droning. Really, really quick plus one, by the way. So we're going to have to see if he throws down some more gases, which would point towards getting Twilight. Uh, or if this is just going to be like a uh, plus one four gate pressure. All right. All right. Uh, two more gases. Looks like he's going to probably get a very quick Twilight here. And, you know, then get that plus two attack quite quickly, get Blink going, get a bunch of sentries, which is very, very strong on this map. On any map, really. It's just good build. Take a little look over here on your keyboard. So, sorry, 40, no, uh, 37 drones now, 233 probes. So yeah. Make some additional structures up there. And there's that Twilight that I was talking about before. Is there any chance of DTs here? Uh, no. You don't think so? No, we're not going to see DTs. And down goes the Robo as well. So, he's going to be going for that very quick plus two attack. The Zobalert looks like it should be able to get in there. Which is annoying. It's a sentry. Oh no, excuse me, the sentry will come up over here. So he only sees those two gases. That's not a lot of information. Yeah, he didn't really. That wasn't the most useful overload there ever was. And uh, everything, though, looking pretty standard for both guys. Uh, Leenok actually getting a pretty quick layer here. It's reasonably quick. Uh, no Roach Warn yet. More gates coming down here. And plus one's almost done. Yeah, so we should be getting that plus two started. Mm -hmm. This is a good Just way a to get uh, you know a substantial uh, leg up on your opponent, mm -hmm. especially with Chrono Boost. You know, there's just not really a way for them to catch up if you just don't have your forge destroyed or oh, yeah. you don't you don't forget. Protoss can just win the upgrade war if they want. Yeah, it, it takes a big investment to do too. So we have a lot of observers being made by parting right now, uh, getting a second one out right away with Chrono Boost, getting that blink as well. Uh, you know what? I mean, this when normally when you get a quick twilight and the plus two attack very quickly, it means that you're going to be going for a blink stalker attack. But because he's gotten the two uh, observers so quickly, I feel like it's going to be an expansion instead. Looks like he's got 400 in no. the bank. Because with the two observers, basically, guys, what you're doing is trying to figure out exactly what your opponent's doing, then watch them as they come so you're ready for it. That way that you can make uh, like a heavier Blink Stalker army, maybe a few less sentries than you would need otherwise. In fact, there you go. The third and base going up. You know, one thing to remember is that Blink can be used defensively. It doesn't have to be offensively. 
You can hold up a lot more blinking around a few stalkers and using force fields. Yeah, yeah. It's. You know? I mean, uh, I feel like it's a better ability for attacking, but definitely can be used for defense as well. And uh, so, I mean, he's in. He's in pretty good shape. He's set this up very well. Uh, with the amount of sentries he has, his zergling run-in from Leenok that's about to occur at the third is not really going to force a cancel. No. Preemptive so, force field there. And he just he has plenty, basically. He's even walled in his, his natural ramp. I think the Zerg's response to this is correct. He yeah. takes a fourth and a fifth. He says, well, you're not going to attack me. I mean, I can't attack you either, but... I can keep expanding. Mm -hmm. It's much harder for the Protoss to take um, additional bases from this point on, this early in the game at least. Yeah, I mean, Protoss can't take a fourth for a while. You To take a fourth base, you really have to be in control of the game or have like an insane army with splash damage in it, uh, which he does just doesn't have either of those right now. So uh, that You're completely right, Tase. That's I love to see Leenok take two bases in response to that and third. Let's just take a moment and kind of reflect on this. This is... Starcraft, or GSL, I should say now, it's, it's, it's about to be two years old. Mm -hmm. I mean, could, when you consider what GSL looked like two years ago with um, the builds players were doing, yeah. wow, have we come a long way. This is actually how Starcraft's supposed to be played. Yeah, it's this not, is no. This is beautiful to see, man. Like these yeah. are these are really intelligent, correct theoretical decisions that we're seeing. Your Protoss opponent's taking his third and can't attack. We'll take a fourth and a fifth, Zerg. Exactly. It's just it's what we want to see here. All right. Lena cautiously backs off here, and it looks like the observers gonna come in here and spot this. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, Sentry's getting hit pretty hard here. Wow, this is actually super effective by Leenok. Really good usage of his Zerglings. In fact, making him burn a lot of energy even on the ones that he didn't have before. And uh-oh, Fungal Grove. Can he possibly chase down those Infestors? That would be huge. Looks like those Force Fields won't finish off. That was actually a perfect withdrawal by Leenok yeah. on the Infestors. He threw down one Fungal, and the thing is, I was looking at him like, oh my god, he could get all the Sentries. But he saw those Stalkers walking in and knew that he could lose his Infestors. Instead, decided to retreat. Back to what you were saying, Tasis, this is how StarCraft should be played. These guys are just tit for tat. Yeah, they really are. Now, by the way, we saw uh, four sentries killed there. There are still four more out, so that's enough force fields to win an engagement with the team, too. Well, now he's out of energy after those. Uh, so he's going to have to wait for those to heal up a little bit on their energy. Also, he is making Colossus at this point. Actually, sorry, Thermal Hands before the Colossus, which was pretty neat. Uh, but, uh, hmm. Adding a bunch of gateways and charge. Yeah, he's uh we're going into macro mode right now. Yeah. Um, and lean okay, off. We got another attack of air invested. Terrence hitting hard here. Is it worth it though? They're they're chasing the stalkers, which are being kited back. Yeah. He's not really paying too much attention to that. You know, I think what Leenox is doing right now is just trying to keep uh, parting in his base as long as possible because he is going up to that very crucial Greater Spire. This is like the weak area for a Zerg is when they're trying to get to Broodlords. So that's yeah. that's what he's doing. He's just using energy, using some units, whatever he can to keep parting over there so that his tech can actually be at the top level. All right. So, um, you know, the Zerg's going to have to run back here. There is, as Artos just said, there is a small... Oh, he should not have rolled that. Okay. Uh, th there is a small window of time where if he can get him before the Broodlord's finish, he's in great shape. Now also note, upper, uh, the fourth base, the center left base on the minimap, not really defended. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He's, uh, and it seems like Leenok's almost completely okay with that. He's not making spine crawlers there or anything. Yeah. He's, uh, that's because he's being just so aggressive and just drawing the army around. He's dictating where parting has to be. And if parting has to be somewhere defending, he can't be attacking. So, uh, good moves by Leenok, who, by the way, is making eight broods right now against uh, parting, who's, I mean, he's getting some Archons, but he doesn't even have a uh, Stargate to tech up to Mothership. So he's going to have a hard time of this. Now, occasionally what you can do is um, when you see Broodlords coming your way, you actually just run away from them with the Stalkers and blink into the main. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to work this time, though. Yeah. Just the way this game's looking, the setup and everything. All right, now Leenok is moving up here. And as he secures his fourth, he's also going to make it impossible for the Protoss to keep his fourth. So Leenok is looking absolutely great. All right, here we go. Engagement starting. Yeah, this base will go down. But Leenok, you know, he double expanded, so he can lose one of them. It's not yeah. going to be like a game ender yeah. or anything like Had that. Had those Spinecrawlers and the Broodlords been up there, the battle would have occurred. But 
Yeah, he doesn't want to do this He doesn't want to risk anything right now. Yeah, he, he wants to get his army a little bit better. In fact, he's getting another Spire. He's getting another base. Uh, and, ooh, he's actually wasting a lot of wings there. He did not want to do that. All right, he's actually... Sorry, for a second, he's going to push up there. Gotta be careful here. Fungal's being thrown down. And look Brood at that. Oh my play. god. Fungal's all the Archons and attacks them with Broodlords. A great move here by Leenok. Those are such important Archons. And the Archon on the run right now. Looks like he will manage to just throw. I think he's going to get away and do oh, a shot. Oh. He, he just a, gave up. He's a quitter, Archon. Yeah, you uh, don't want to quit, man. So, uh, Protoss almost maxed out. Actually, they're both might as well be maxed out. They're so high. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, right now, Parting does have that fourth base, which is really important. And he is getting uh, Warp Prism with speed, which is awesome. We have and the Fleet Beacon, though, just starting. So it's going to be hard to kill these. Six more Broodlords on oh the way, man. Oh, my God. That's, that's a lot. I feel like Zerg can push at this point in time. With the number of Fungals here and Broodlords. Mm. Right, small attack down here. You know, the way he's playing with all these spines, it looks like he wants to play like the super cost efficient, uh, turtley style yeah. of the Breedlord as opposed to the death push. That's what it looks like right well, now. Yeah, the placement's pretty slick here. All right, so he does hold that off. No way to attack into that base. Might as well have gotten rid of the zealots, though, attacking in that direction. See if he can't chase them out. You know, if Leenok wants to attack, he's going to have to do it pretty soon here because the Fleet Beacon just finished. Yeah. And so now there's a countdown to when we're going to see a mothership. And of course, once the mothership is out, things get dirty. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know, late game, metagame, you just want to vortex all the Broodlords and send the Archons in there. Archon toilet that. So that's why the mothership is so scary. Meanwhile, we got Zealot Drops coming over here as the death push ensues. Right, he's starting to push out with these three lords. But we do have, oh my god, this zealot drop on the greater spire. This is a big deal. If he oh can no. kill this off, it's so big. He does have, there's a Queen's of the Natural with a ton of energy oh, to actually Oh, things are running by. He's actually just not paying attention to this at all. Trying to transfuse, can he transfuse again? He has tons of transfusion ah! energy. No way, are you serious? I wow. thought he could transfuse. He had, he had enough for like nine right. transfusions. But our toast, meanwhile, we're going to put some of the base raid scenario here. No, he's not. He's going to turn around. But this means the Protoss army could be trapped. No escape. Yeah, he has so many investors at this point. There's 18 of them and 15 broods. That's enough to kill just about now, anything ever. This is what I'm talking about. Look, the Stalkers can just ignore the, uh, the other units. Oh my god, he's going to get this uh, greater spider here as well. Oh god. Totally painful. Uh, but in the meantime, Harding has actually overextended to the bottom right. He is trying to stay alive here with these Stalkers. Looks like they probably will be taken out very easily, though. Kind of a weird game here. Um, and, doing yeah. a lot of damage. Um, okay, we got the Warp Prism coming in over here. He's going to warp in a ton of Zealots over here. Not clear there's going to be enough to defend. This yeah, is the problem, is. guys. Brood Lords are very slow. Harding actually might be doing this, guys. Yeah, it looks like he's basically got the game at this point. All he has to do is kill one very scary army. You can't underestimate that. That is a very, very scary army, but... Uh, I mean, well, Leonok actually has to go Void attack, Rays. I think. Man. Void Rays can be very useful against Brood Lords, but against this many Infestors, unless Leenok wastes his energy, Void Rays should not be an issue. All right, the Mothership is about to pop out. He is going to give up this base, you can see over here, unless that army repositions. Uh, meanwhile, another Void Ray coming out here. Uh, Lenox, uh base in the bottom center is being hit pretty hard. Yeah, hatchery after hatchery is falling right now. And we didn't get a shot of it, but the hatchery was killed. Boom! Out comes the mothership. All right, so now he just needs that to get up to 100 energy to have a chance to kill off these Broodlords easily. But as of right now, this is going to be pretty hard. All right, this is scary a very army. scary wave here. Note the spread, because I don't want one vor uh, vortex to get all my brood lords. So those I say that they punch up a little bit more. All right, he's getting out here now. Stalker count only at 16. And well, he does have five archons, which is really nice, and six high templars with a ton of energy. So feedbacks plus size storms will be helpful. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Here we go, tasteless. Where are the Infestors? They're oh, a little bit far down. behind. He's got to be so bit. careful. All right, you can see Parting actually, for the time being, says maybe I can just give up my base. I want to make absolutely sure I have more than enough. Yeah. 
Here. Well, he's got to kill that army. That is the one thing that he has to be sure of, is killing it off. Harding does have low supply. You know, he sacrificed a lot of Zealots and units, actually going around and killing all the bases. So. It looks like he wants to intercept them as they come around, kind of like Genius in that one game we cast uh, season or two ago. Oh my god, oh my god. That is a ton! Oh! And he actually throws down the Vortex as uh, he was actually getting knurled. Okay, but that was a ton of Infested Terrans thrown out. He's got to be careful. He's got to keep some Infestors with energy to hold this army so it can't work under these, this huge amount of Brood Lords. All right, again, it's going to be covered. What is the energy on that Mothership? Uh, mothership is low. It's going to take a long oh, time. Oh, the Storm's here. Very nice Storm. Oh, my God. Huge Storm's going down. Oh, my God. Going under the Brood Lords now. Well, a lot of Infested Terrans are popping out. They do have that plus two attack to help out, but does Leenok actually have enough? Looks like the answer may in fact be no, Tasteless. Five Broodlords left. Archons with them doing a lot of damage. No more Stalkers here. The Void Rays, though, may be able to clean up because he yep, doesn't have like a lot of energy left. All right, Infested Terrans coming out from underneath, though. Looks oh. like one more Broodlord's going to go down. And down go the Void Rays. Also, note the supply here. That's the real story. 176 to 63. Wow, Harding losing that army. Just does not have the economy needed to get another one. You know, he killed a lot of hatcheries uh, in that one crazy time where he sent units everywhere, but losing that much of his army, killing no uh, investors or blue lords during it, it's turned out to not be the right choice. I think, uh, yeah, it looks like... The, yeah, the fact that he decided to sack his bases in the hopes to uh, win that battle in the end mm -hmm. means he just can't recover. In fact, I think this is G yeah, GG. Wow. Leenok, very strong play, but Harding, very strong play as well. It's a little bit back and forth there in the middle. You know, it's funny because uh, we saw we saw Party give up those bases, and I thought, well, of course Party's going to win that final battle, but it seemed like the blink in on top of those Broodlords uh, didn't quite cut it. And, um... Mm -hmm. I don't know, it was kind of, a, kind of a wonky game, but I loved it. Yeah, he was just talking to the reflection of Choya in the glass. That was really yeah, funny. That was the ghost of Choya. <laughs> Choya was behind it, but he was looking up into the glass. <laughs> That's funny. Um, damn, close game there. Uh, I did like what Parting was doing in the, in the uh, I guess, the midpoint in that game. Flying the uh, War Prisms in there, hitting the main base. Saying, all right, you got Broodlords, you got a ton of them. Guess what? They're slow. I have Warp Prism Speed, I'm going to fly into your base, I'm going to warp in a bunch of Zealots, kill off your spawning pool, kill off your Greater Spire. I think if he kept doing that, then the moment that, uh, you know, Leenok moves out, he's in good shape. I felt like he had, if he had one or two more, uh, you know, Warp Prisms out there doing that, maybe this game would look differently. Yeah, maybe. Uh, he only needed a certain amount of Void Rays. Uh, you know, Void Rays, they're a tricky thing to go against, sir, because nowadays Infested Terrans plus Fungal are so good against Voids that uh, it makes it pretty hard to actually clean up with them. He did an okay job that time, but just a little bit too much Infested Hey, I got, I got a question. Um, actually, if a Broodling is sucked into a Vortex, mm -hmm. does it die before it comes out? Yeah. It does? Yeah. Okay. In fact, uh, like infested Terran eggs hatch in them as well, which is why we sometimes see a ton of eggs thrown in. Sometimes it spreads out the Archons, so they can't be grouped up as easily oh, under the Broodlords. Okay. And then, of course, they're dealing damage immediately to the Archons as well. Uh, yeah, it's pretty tricky, those Vortexes. Saw that Vortex. Yeah. Mind game stuff. All right, guys, we're going to go on to the uh, map number two. It's going to be Ohana. And this map makes uh, this map makes epic PVZs. Yeah, it really it does. It really does, man. Like I never see a quick PVZ here. No. It seems like it's always gonna be Brutor Tech. Alright guys, it's time. Can Party come back or is Lee not gonna close us out with the 2-0? We're gonna find out soon. We have the best players for StarCraft 2 in the world here in Seoul Korea at the GSL Co.